In this video, we'll talk about properties of matrix addition. And before we talk about the properties, let's clear one thing. When is addition valid? So for real numbers, you can add any two of them. But for matrices, you can only add them if they have the same order, if they have the same dimensions. So for this matrix, the order is two by two. We have two rows and two columns. You can add any two by two matrix with this, but you cannot add any other matrix which has a different order. So this is valid because both of these are two by two matrices of the same order can be added. But look at this. This is not valid. You cannot add this matrix with this one. Matrix of different order can't be added. Now let's talk about properties of matrix addition. And one thing to note, and you'll see that over and over again, is that the matrix addition relies very heavily on addition of real numbers. So wherever you'll see a property working, if you open the hood, you'll see that it's working because that property works for real numbers as well. Now let's look at the properties. We have the commutative property, which says if you add two matrices, you can add them in any order. If you have two matrices A and B, you can either add A to B or you can add B to A. Notice that this works for real numbers as well. If you have two real numbers, five and seven, you can either add five to seven or you can add seven to five. Then you have associative property. This says if you have more than two matrices, let's say you have three matrices, A, B and C, and you're adding all three of them, you can group them in any order. You can first add B and C and then add the sum to A, or you can first add A and B and then add the sum to C. And this also works because we have the same thing working for real numbers as well. Then we have additive identity. Now additive identity simply says that there is a matrix, we call it the zero matrix, that when you add it to a matrix, you get the same matrix. So A plus zero matrix will give you the same A matrix. Again, the condition here is that this zero matrix has to have the same order as that of A. So for real numbers, we have the number zero. For matrices, we have zero matrices. Then we have additive inverse. This property says that for any matrix A, there exists an opposite, there exists a minus A or negative A, that when you add to it, you get the zero matrix. The same thing works for real numbers. For example, 10, minus 10, 20, minus 20, and so on. And finally, we have closure property. Now for real numbers, closure property says that if you add two real numbers, you will get a real number. You cannot get anything else. For matrices, it's slightly different. Closure property says that if you add two matrices of the same dimensions of the same order, then their sum will be of the same order as well. So here we have a two by two and we add a two by two to this. So the sum will also have the order two by two. So that's closure property. Now let's see why are these properties working at which step at exactly which step real numbers are coming into play. Let's look at them. The commutative property A plus B is equal to B plus A. Let's take an example. We have this matrix and we have this matrix 3, 7, 2, 4, and we add 5, 2, 8, 1 to it. Now matrix addition says that you add the corresponding elements. So let's do that. So this is 3 plus 5. This is 7 plus 2. This is 2 plus 8. This is 4 plus 1. Now in this video, we're not actually interested in finding the sum. We want to know at which step do the real numbers come into play? And that's this step. Notice three and five are talking to each other. This element is three plus five, and we can rearrange this. We can write this as five plus three. We can also do the same for others. We have two plus seven, eight plus two, and one plus four. For this element, three and five do not have to care about whether they're sitting in a matrix or not. We want to find the value of this element. This is three plus five, we can also write this as five plus three. And now we can break this five plus three, two plus seven, eight plus two, and one plus four. We can say that we have two matrices. The first elements are coming from one of them and the second element is coming from the other one. So we have the sum of two matrices. We have five, two, eight, and one. That's our first matrix. And then we have three, seven, two, and four. That's our second matrix. Notice we have flipped the order. We started with three, seven, two, four. And now we are starting with five, two, eight, one. And we could do this because the order could be flipped at this step. The real number addition is commutative, which makes 
the addition of matrices also commutative. Let's look at a few more properties. We have the associative property that's a plus b plus c. If you group b plus c first, that's equal to a plus b plus c when you're grouping a and b first. So again, let's take an example, a plus b plus c. If you have these three matrices, 3724 plus 5281 plus 1234. Now let's add b and c first. So this gives 5 plus 1, the first element gets added, then 2 plus 2, 8 plus 3, and then 1 plus 4. Now let's not actually add them. Let's keep bringing these real numbers closer. We have 3 plus 5 plus 1. Now we are looking at these two matrices. This is the first element. This is also the first element. Row 1, element 1, row 1, element 1. So let's add these two. We have 3 plus 5 plus 1, and the same thing works for others. 7 plus 2 plus 2. 2 plus 8 plus 3 and then 4 plus 1 plus 4. And at this step, 3 plus 5 plus 1 doesn't have to care whether they're sitting in the matrix or not. 3 plus 5 plus 1 can be rewritten as 3 plus 5, grouping these two first and then 1. You can do the same thing for others. So at this step, the properties of real numbers are coming into play. Because addition of real numbers is associative, we can move from this matrix to this matrix. And now we can say that we have these two elements. This is the first one, three plus five combined. And this is the second one, one. They're coming from two different matrices. So let's split them. We have three plus five, seven plus two, two plus eight, four plus one. This is our first matrix. And then we have one, two, three, and four as our second matrix. Now we can also say that this sum is coming from two matrices. The first one is three, seven, two, four. And the second one is five, two, eight, and one. So we're doing this addition first and then we're adding this third one. So 3, 7, 2, 4 plus 5, 2, 8, 1, grouping these first, and then 1, 2, 3, and 4. Notice again that we have flipped the order. We started by adding B and C, and then we ended up with something that has A and B being added together first. And we could do that because real number addition is associative. Let's take a few more. Additive identity. This says A plus a zero matrix will give you A. Here's an example, a equals to 3, 7, minus 2, 4. Now if you add a zero matrix to it, and we have to be careful, we can only add the matrix which has the same order. So we'll add a two by two. So zero matrix, zero, 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 zero. Now when you add the corresponding elements, this is what you get. a plus zero equals to three plus zero, seven plus zero, minus two plus zero, and four plus zero. And you've already guessed that at this step, we can write three plus zero as three, 7 plus 0 is 7, minus 2 plus 0 is minus 2, and 4 plus 0 is 4. Why? Because you can do that for real numbers. 0 is the additive identity for real numbers. So this is your same thing as A, and we could do this because 0 is the additive identity for real numbers. Then we have additive inverse. This says for any matrix A, we have its opposite, it's negative, that's minus A. If you add these two, you'll get the 0 matrix. So let's try doing that. If we start with a, 3, 7, minus 2, 4, and we take its negative, minus a, that's negative of each of these elements, we have minus 3, minus 7, minus of minus 2 is 2, minus 4. Now let's add these two. We have a plus minus a, that's 3 plus minus 3, 7 plus minus 7, minus 2 plus 2, and 4 plus minus 4. So this is what we get. Again, as you've probably guessed, this is the step where real number properties are coming into play. You can have a number and it's negative. If you add them, you'll get zero. So this, this is zero, this is zero, zero, and zero. So now you have all the elements as zero, which means you get the zero matrix. So the sum of a real number and its opposite is zero. This is why you're getting the additive inverse property for matrices. And finally, the closure property that says if you're adding, you'll get the same dimension, you get the same order. Now to understand this, here's a fun problem. If A and B are three by two matrices, which of the following matrices are equivalent to A plus minus A, and you have a bracket here, plus B. So here are the options. This sum is equal to which of the following? We have B, we have A plus bracket minus A plus B, we have zero, 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 zero plus B, and we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 plus b. Pause the video, think about it. Okay, 
let's apply all the properties that we know now a plus minus a so these are negatives of each other opposites of each other so if you add them you'll get the zero matrix and if you add zero matrix to b you'll get b so this is correct now this is a plus minus a plus b now in this case we are grouping these two first and in this case we are grouping these two first but it doesn't matter which one you pick first both of them are same so this is also equal then we have a zero matrix plus b now this should be true because you will get b but it isn't why because this zero matrix is a two by two matrix and this can't be added to b which is a three by two matrix so this is incorrect and then finally we have this one it has the correct order three rows and two columns so we can add this to b so this works zero plus b is exactly what we need